Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I am with Plugin Alliance, helping show off the new Brainworks BX Limiter True Peak. I'm going to take you through what the basic controls are on this limiter, tell you about why it's interesting, why it's important, and we'll even be able to hear it on some tracks together. The most important thing for you to do is to be able to hear this for yourself. So definitely think about downloading that free trial over at plugin-alliance.com where you can try out this or anything else they make for free for 14 days. But let's get right into the Brainworks BX Limiter True Peak. What makes it interesting? What makes it important? I've got to say, this is probably the best sounding True Peak limiter I've heard yet. Bold claim, you tell me. Download it, try it out for yourself, but I think you might agree. A lot of True Peak limiters out there were really designed as regular limiters and then had a True Peak function kind of thrown on them at the end. This limiter was designed from the ground up to be a True Peak limiter. And one of the biggest complaints with True Peak limiters up until now is that things don't quite sound right when you switch your favorite limiter from regular mode into true peak mode. People complain about instability in the low end, about edginess or harshness or mushiness of things just not sounding quite the same when they go from regular mode to true peak mode on their favorite plugins. This BX limiter true peak though was designed from the ground up to be a true peak limiter. It uses something called selective oversampling where it's using oversampling in those portions of the signal where the engineers of Brainworks have found it to be helpful and kind of ignores oversampling in those areas where they found it to actually be detrimental or counterproductive to the signal. They worked in this in conjunction with a bunch of mastering engineers to get their feedback on it. And it is, I think, one of the most simple, beautiful, easy to use limiters out there. Let's dive under the hood of it. I think you're going to like it too. So right off the bat, I think you'll see the controls and layout are familiar but a little different to some limiters you may be used to and we're going to go through them one by one first in case you don't know what a true peak limiter is the whole idea of true peak is that when you limit a sound when you make a mix sound louder and you make it loud enough you can end up with what are called intersample peaks a conventional digital limiter is going to reduce the peaks whenever they go above the threshold but they're actually going to ignore the peaks and overs that are implied in your waveform that occur in between the samples for the sampling rate of your session. So a true peak limiter is designed to get rid of this issue so that you don't have any kind of phantom digital overs upsetting your audio and potentially causing distortion for listeners at end playback. This will theoretically allow you to get your tracks even louder without risking distortion, which is always a nice thing. Let's go into the controls one by one here. You'll see the most dominant knobs here are gain and ceiling. And just like a conventional limiter, if you bring up this gain knob, you'll start driving signal further into the limiter, causing more gain reduction and getting the sound louder. But you can also apply this limiter without increasing gain by bringing down the ceiling knob. This way you can get limiting starting to happen without out bringing up the gain on the limiter. There's also this handy dandy link control that allows you to bring these up and down together. So rather than just bringing up the gain or just bringing down the ceiling, you can do a little bit of both with the link control. One more interesting thing about the gain control is that you actually have negative values accessible to you here. So if you're dealing with a track that's really hot and is hitting the threshold too hard right out of the gate, you can even bring the gain control into negative territory. There's also over here two different compressor modes, modern and classic. The classic is a little bit of a safer, slightly more old school style of digital limiter, while the modern mode is even a little bit faster and punchier. And I've really been enjoying this modern mode on a lot of material. There's some additional ability to customize things. You can change the release time here, and you can dial in a little bit of Brainworks' XL saturation, which really sounds lovely. The customization does not stop there. You have these tone controls in here, very unusual for a limiter, but super welcome. You have a high pass filter and a low pass filter built in. This is not for the side chain of the limiter. This will actually be affecting the audio passing through it. It's super handy to have. And I've loved playing around with this foundation control. If you tilt it to the right, you end up getting a little bit more low end in your signal. And if you tilt it to the left, you get a little bit more of a kind of clean, tight bottom in your signal. Under the hood, it's a little bit of a 
secret sauce kind of tilt EQ filter going on, but it's been extremely helpful, I think, in a lot of these tracks that you'll be able to hear it on. You can turn off any of these individually with these buttons down here. And then there's this section where you have channel link, limiter mix, so you can do parallel limiting in a mixing context, or dim down the output so you're not going all the way up to zero dBFS, but are maybe trying to hit some specific target like negative one true peak, which may be required for certain formats. One of my favorite things in this section is the channel link function. A lot of limiters have their channel link automatically set to 100% linked left and right. And I often go unlinking by 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, and I often find I get the best results there. Instead of having the default at 100% linked, the default here is 75% linked, which I think is a much better starting place for real world practical purposes. Of course, you can save your own presets with your own preferred default starting point, but I think this was a great idea that they set it here at 75% just to start out. Finally, you've got some great metering in here where you can meter the input and the output, and you have a great loudness meter here. And you can select specific loudness targets, like the negative 14 that's advised for most streaming services, European, US, and Japanese broadcast. You can also go a little bit louder with these loud and louder targets of negative 8 or negative 6 LUFs. And you can also make your own custom targets as well where you can type in your own values here to hit your own preferred loudness targets. You can look at these loudness targets in both momentary and short-term modes. Right now, I'm going to go over here to this dynamic default setting, which is not a bad one for a lot of genres. Finally, you're able to do a left-right swap or solo your channels left or right. You can solo them in place. This would solo your right channel in the right-hand side as opposed to soloing your right-hand channel in the center. And you can listen to just the mids or just the sides. Last but not least, there's a correlation meter up here in the monitor section, letting you hear how phase coherent your signal is. That's about it for controls. Really simple, seamless, easy to use interface. And you can also change the way it looks, which is kind of cool. Go up here to the top right, and instead of this cool red theme, you can change it to orange, change it to yellow, change it to, I think, my favorite here, purple. This is a good one. Blue. Ice. I wonder what that looks like. And green setting and a whole bunch more. So choose your own adventure, pick your own lightsaber, and move on.